This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. This episode of Know How is brought to you by the Ring Video Doorbell. With Ring, you can see and talk to anyone at your door from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. It's like caller ID for your house. Go to ring.com slash know how and get up to $150 off a Ring of Security kit. Today on Know How, Networking 102, Part 1. Welcome to Know How. It's a Twitch show where we build, band break, and upgrade. I am Father Robert Ballas here. And I'm Brian Burnett. And for the next hour or so, we're going to be zipping the unzipping the knowledge bag Pop. of Ziploc. Thing. Yeah, right. And yeah. then throwing some, some knowledge in there and Ziploc in it. Freezer in a freezer safe bag, right? Seriously, we need to think out these examples before we actually start the show. No, nah, I'm still just impressed at how good we did our fusion. <laughs> Almost. Right, right, right. right? Okay, I'm folks. that. Now, Networking 101 was a big hit. Now, you remember we brought back a bunch of knowledge that we dropped on you in past mm -hmm. years because people were complaining that it was too spread out. We had, you know, this episode from three years ago and this episode from two years ago, and then right. we did this one six months ago. Well, in Networking 101, we showed you some of the basics of routing. We showed you how the internet actually works. We showed you the type of equipment that you should be purchasing for your home network. We want to get into a slightly more advanced topic. This is no longer just about buying something and installing it properly. We need you to start creating your own network. And that's what Networking 102 is all about. That's right. But Padre, why do we have all these wires here? You know, this is, is where it's at. This is one of these things where um, uh, this gets put in demand a lot more than you might think. Uh, we are going to yes. be doing premise wiring. This is important because people, when they start to actually look at how their network is set up at their home, their apartment, their mm -hmm. whatever it might be, they start to realize that, as you mentioned, Wi-Fi is everywhere, but there are some distinct advantages to having a network that is wired. Especially if you are a gamer or oh, yeah. you like to, I don't know, stream movies, stuff like that, like, uh, or pass big files between one computer to another computer and there's actually walls between them, you know, <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. there's there's no question that Wi-Fi is convenient. We love Wi-Fi because it, well, it works with everything, our phones, our laptops, even mm -hmm. our streaming set-top boxes. Wi-Fi has become so ubiquitous that people just kind of assume that they're going to get a Wi-Fi connection somewhere. Now, right. all of our laptops, if I want to use a wired connection and I'm using, say, an Ultrabook, I don't think there's an Ultrabook out, left out there that has an Ethernet jack built in. You have to use, like, USB or Thunderbolt right. to Ethernet. Which we have encountered uh, a lot of problems with that on our network because a lot of the guests that we call are on Skype. Mm -hmm. And they believe that typically Wi-Fi would be good enough. But when we're sending video back, we need video from them and we want decent audio for our shows. We much prefer a hardwired um, solution. Yeah, you, you will see us anytime we've got a guest on and uh, we start to notice little quality concerns with yes. their stream from Skype. We'll always ask, are you on a wired or wireless connection? And so many of them, which is which is weird because they're all technologists as well. Right. They think, no, but I'm wireless, but it's going to be fine. It's like, well, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. What you don't see with Wi-Fi, because most of the time you're not doing things that are jitter sensitive, you're, you're surfing the web, is that the connectivity and the throughput goes up and down wildly. Right. And that is, let, let's go down, you know, one of the reasons why you're going to want a wired network that's because Wi-Fi is a shared spectrum. This is this is physics. This is nothing about a particular vendor or a particular technology. If you are broadcasting radio waves through the air to an antenna that will pick them up and then broadcast its own radio waves back to the base station, it means two things. One, it's asynchronous. Right. You know, it's unidirectional. Either you're speaking or you're listening. You can't do both at the same time unless you have two different radios mm -hmm. that are set to different frequencies. Because if it's on the same frequency, you send two waves, they will cancel or interrupt with one right. another, right? So that's best case scenario. Worst case scenario is you get all these specs on your uh, your the box that you buy, the router slash AP, that mm -hmm. says this can do 1.4 gigabits per second, or right. there's, and there's a new 10 gig wireless standard for very short range. Mm -hmm. But that's a shared spectrum. Yes. So if you put this thing in a Faraday cage, where it's got no outside interference, and you put two antennas 
at the ideal distance. Yes, you so can. Best case scenario. Absolute best case scenario. But not real world. Not even <laughs> close to the real world. Because in the in the real world, not only do you have natural radio waves and natural radiation that right. will throw that off, you've got every other device that's trying to speak the same protocols on the same channels. Right, right. And uh, not all apartments or houses are created this, in the same way. Nope. And so in my situation, I need to have a cable where my, the cable comes into my home for the modem and the router is at the very front and where my yep. desktop computer is, is on the absolute opposite end of the house, right. which isn't very far, but there are like three or four walls in between. And there's a few different networks nearby too. So it's like, oh, well, you could just use... You could use five gigahertz if it's congested. And we've talked about it before. Yeah. Five gigahertz doesn't go through walls. It just doesn't penetrate. No, it doesn't penetrate. 2.4 is better, but there's a lot more congestion on that. So in my case, I have to have a hard line to my desktop. But the cable that I use, Padre, is probably 30 feet longer than I actually need. Because it came from Wait. the old no-hole. Mm, so you just... Kind of took a used cable and plugged it in. No. So me and Burke, we measured it out. So for the prior no hole, which was in the Twit Brick House uh, basement, I needed I needed like a hundred foot cable to go from where the internet was down to the, you know, the crevice that was the old no hole in the basement. And uh, I took that, we made that wire and it was perfect for that. But then I took it to my apartment and it is way too long. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's I've it works, before. but it's way too long, and I need to cut it. Otherwise, I have this bundle of cable underneath my desk, and so I'm guessing we're going to be uh, making our own cables here. We in are, a we bit. are in a bit. But but first, let's let's go ahead and run down a couple more of the reasons why sure. people are going to want this. I mean, first of all, yes, it's because Wi-Fi is a shared spectrum, and yes. imagine this: if I've got one device connected to my base station, and let's say it, it guarantees me one gigabit per second, even though I'm not going to get it in the real world, let's say it does. So that one device is connected at one gig, fantastic. But I had two devices. Now I have mm. two devices speaking to the same base station. You might think, oh, it divides it in half. No, because nope. you actually lose some from the overhead and from the collisions right. that those two devices are going to have. Because every time two devices or more transmit at the same time- They'll bounce or cancel each other out. It, well, yeah, it creates a cacophony. And what they do is they, they back off- they wait a random amount of time and then they try to retransmit. Uh, okay. And so, you know, two devices, it's going to happen, you know, a little bit. So let's say I get one gigabit per second for one device. Two devices might drop that down to 450 megabits per second. Three devices. Yeah. Three devices, is that going to drop it down even further? Maybe 275 megabits per second. Four devices, yeah. maybe 100 megabits per second. Because the more devices you add, the more chance there is that they're going to be transmitting at the same time and they're going to have to back off and retransmit. It gets crowded so fast too oh, yeah. because I think there's just two people living, me and my wife at my apartment and we both have our phones. We both have our own laptops. She has an iPad. I occasionally have like an, a, my Fire tablet or something that I use. And then there's two Chromecasts and I think, oh, the Nintendo Switch. And that's all using the Wi-Fi. So I've got like maybe a dozen devices at a time using the Wi-Fi at my home. And that's just your devices. I mean, yeah. if you've got neighbors who are using Wi-Fi, which you do because everyone is, their Stupid devices, neighbors. even though they're not connected to your network, they're still broadcasting on the same frequencies. Yeah. You also may have a microwave or a cordless phone or like a baby monitor <laughs> that's operating in the frequencies that's used by Wi-Fi because it's unregulated spectrum okay so at my parents house there was a microwave whenever it was turned on or being in use it would just kill the wi-fi yeah. like like that's straight also, on uh, jammer that yeah jammer and also uh, that can't be good you're, right you're cooking yourself it i hope you were never like as a kid staring right at the microwave it's is that bad well because yeah i mean my eyeballs would start to feel warm but you know when you're putting what is it the little uh peeps marshmallows in there you I'll expand you, yeah, yeah you're going to have to watch them to see them explode. Well, in any case, you know, when we're talking about wired versus wireless, when you start using a wired network instead of a wireless network, you're not hitting that constraint. Mm. If you hook up one device to a gigabit switch, you get two gigabits, one in each direction at the same time, because remember, it's one gig down, one gig up. Right. If I ho hook up two devices, each device has two gigs. I hook mm. up three devices, each device gets Two gigs. Right. I hook up 10 devices, and as long as my backplane, we talked about this in Networking 101, as long as the backplane is big enough, and most of them are because they have multiple terabytes per second that they can transfer, yeah. every device will get the full line rated speed because since they're traveling through cables instead of through the air, they're not sharing that spectrum. So 
That's the first reason why you're going to want wired instead of wireless. Okay. And as much as a, I don't know, aesthetic pain wires might be, this is the practical solution for data transfer. It really is. It was the de facto solution. I mean, yeah. you got to remember, Wi-Fi has only been around for about 15 years. That's as, as we half know my it. life, Padre. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> it's been really pretty old. much my whole life. Wow. No. Okay. Never mind. Okay. So here's another thing. Wi-Fi is inherently insecure. Mm. You are transmitting data, even if it's encrypted, over the air. Anyone who wants to put in the time to decrypt can do that. They can capture the packets and then decrypt at their leisure. Or if, let's say, they have access to the Wi-Fi network, they also have the key, your traffic is visible to them. Right. Uh, so, you know, it's it's inherently insecure. Wi-Fi, what we consider Wi-Fi, is to be a convenience technology. It's not a security technology, and it's definitely not something you would you would ever pass sensitive information over. People, people forget this. I mean, I can sit in a coffee shop, and I see people doing banking. I see people doing unprotected chat, and I'm thinking, you, you know, if, if I was a bad person, I could, I could see all that. You could do bad things. I mean, I guess the... The way you could explain it is having a conversation with somebody, yeah. like people can hear that. That's going through the air. But if I were to write a note and then slide it over to you, Precisely. someone standing nearby wouldn't be able to see it. And that's what a wired network is like because I've got that one point of connection to my switch. My switch is connecting over to the other client that I might be talking to. And as long as no one's running a man in the middle attack on the network, yeah. my I can more or less assume that my my communications are secure. Right. And if you're on a home your home network, it's usually safe to assume there's not a physical tap connected to well, your network. My right? network has a physical tap. But well, yeah. Put it there, but so. yeah, exactly. You would okay. be aware of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the third thing is what you mentioned before, which is Wi Fi penetration is is iffy. I mean you yes. everyone knows that that one spot or two spots in the house where you just can't go. Right. Because if you go there your laptop disconnects or your mm -hmm. phone no longer gets Wi Fi or you see connection, but nothing ever happens. Right. Uh, it's intermittent. It's intermittent. And that's because there's different construction materials, and those different construction materials will reflect RF energy differently. It goes fine through drywall, mm -hmm. but let's say you have some wet drywall. Wet drywall absorbs 2.4 gigahertz. Right. I always hear Patrick Norton talk about it's like horsehair drywall or something yeah. like that, or maybe even they use chicken wire at some point, and that's like a, being yeah. in a Faraday cage. Mesh. Isn't it? Yeah. Mesh is horrible. And some old houses do still use mesh in their drywall and their, their uh, stucco which kills Wi-Fi. And remember, here's, here's the big thing for 2.4, because 2.4 does penetrate well, but 2.4 gigahertz is the frequency at which water vibrates, uh, which means water kills 2.4. Uh, dead, gone. Just like absorbs it completely. Absorbs it completely. And that's how microwaves work. It generates signals at 2.4 gigahertz and that vibrates, vibrates the, water. the water molecules, which that makes sense. causes heat. Mm -hmm. And why my eyeballs started to burn. <laughs> don't, don't burn. Don't do that? Don't, don't okay. do that. Uh, number four... Now, for consumer-level gear, management over Wi-Fi is nearly non-existent. Uh, some mm -hmm. of the higher-level routers from Asus, from Synology, the ones that we played with, will do things like individual quality of service management by MAC address. Right. Uh, but, I mean, not the lower-level ones. And you definitely can't do things like individually assigned VLANs, whereas even a relatively inexpensive home switch is going to support QS. It will support VLANs. It will support a little bit of management. Mm -hmm. And once you start playing around with management, uh, it's very hard to move back because when you can define specifically where certain types of traffics are going to go, you start thinking, I want that all the time. Right. No, the different, uh, an investment into a good router, um, it's hard to put into words like how much of it's no longer a pita, a pain in the yeah. ass to deal with. Because now that I've been using a better router, where I'd say majority of my life I had just a router. It worked. You plug it in. The Wi-Fi sucked. And I always had to kind of fool around to try and get things to work, to work the way I wanted to. Once I got a decent router with like a decent, uh, good antenna good antennas mm -hmm. on it and Wi-Fi mm -hmm. and stuff, it was like day and night change right? on my network. Yeah. And be able to specify certain devices to give them priority like xbox gets priority when i'm playing it because i want you know i'm playing games yeah. on it or i'm watching movies on it i don't want my bandwidth throttled at that yeah yeah uh you know one of the the other things that you're really going to like and this this goes with uh with your installation is the flexibility that you're offered when you wire mm. uh, I always get this. How do I connect x to my wireless network how do i connect y to my wireless network it's, i'm not getting good signal da 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 if you've got your house wired, you always have the option of 
dropping an access point at the end of that wire. Mm -hmm. So if there's a room that you absolutely need connectivity in, and now you're thinking of running a Wi-Fi extender or you know power over uh, Ethernet over power, if you if you've already wired up and you've put two drops, you drop an access point on that thing, and, right. and boom, you've got full connectivity. It's fantastic. Also, we talked about this last time. Remember how I told people in Networking 101 not to daisy chain their switches? Mm -hmm. The reason why you don't want to daisy chain your switch is because you're creating bottlenecks. That's a constraint. Right. Uh, because each one of those ports, remember, two gigabits, unless you buy a 10 gig switch, in which case you have a lot of money and can we have some? But <laughs> if you've got two gigabits, one going up and one coming down, Right. which is fine. That's fine for a client. But now let's say I've got a 12 port switch, mm -hmm. I've got 11 clients plus the one port going back to the main switch. It's, yeah, still one line going still back. Still one line. So all of those clients are now constrained to going through that two gigabits or one gigabit each way connection. Right. You don't want to do that. Uh, if you do premise wiring, if you wire up your own house, you have everything come back to the same panel. There's no daisy chaining. Now you have a patch panel with all the ports in your house and every single one of them gets full advantage of the backplane of your main switch. Yeah, I mean, if I had the advantage of designing my own home, that's the way yeah. I would do it. But I live in an apartment. I can't make a yeah. lot of those fundamental changes. So the way I have it laid out, it's router to switch and then the switch sends out to Xbox, my PC, and I think one external storage unit yeah. that I have a NAS. So it is a little it's bit of a bottleneck. Good. Yeah. But it, yeah, it hasn't affected me. It's much better than if I were trying to do Wi-Fi. Yeah. And, and I mean, the thing there is you're 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 just you're going from, a, you don't have any daisy chain switches. Yeah. So you're, you're actually okay. Okay, cool. You're good. Uh, and uh, along with the maintenance, uh, something else to consider is um, like when I uh, helped to renovate my old family home here in, in uh, Fremont, yeah. We did four wireless drops per port, and we had four boxes per room because we basically tore out all the walls. We're like, if the walls are out, might as well do it. Let's now. wire everything. And the, the wonderful thing about that is we also put conduit, so we've got cables for you know uh, SDI in case we want to do high, def high definition video. Right. We've got network jacks that support all the security cameras that are around the property, uh, and the fact that you have so many jacks and a oh, fantastic management. Uh, from a central patch panel means I can patch anything to anything. Mm -hmm. It's it's like having my own telephone switchboard. I just kind of I geek out to that. Well, yeah, that's definitely what you're into. Um, yeah. But if you th if you have the advantage of planning it out ahead of time it, and set it up properly, you can be set for you know a decades or whatever. Because I remember even with my dad, he <laughs> we ran uh, Cat Five through the whole house to every room. He went up in the attic and I just helped him like thread the cables. So he had the hard job. But I mean, that has lasted, you know, over a decade yeah. since we once, did that. Do it right once and it will last for a very long time. Yeah. Which, by the way, <laughs> okay, let's let's go off the rails completely, Brian. Sure. Um, why not? It's know-how. When we started renovating the house, mm -hmm. um, my old networking, because when you tear the walls down, you can see everything that's there. Yeah. And you could see all the old networking I had done over the past 20 years. So <laughs> growing up as a kid, <laughs> learning how to the, network. The different levels. And yeah. like you went from basically phone cable that I kind of made work for a network <laughs> to category six that was yeah. run the wrong way. Um, it's it's interesting. You get kind of obsessive compulsive about this. It's like, I don't want any ugly yeah. wires the cable um, management. Yeah. Everything has to look beautiful. I mean, all if, if you were to tear the walls open in the house now, everything looks so organized. Like all <laughs> the cables look like racetracks. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's kind of addicting. There, I, I'm pretty sure there's a website or it's a subreddit that is, um, it's like networking nirvana or yep. something, something yep. like that. But it's that it um, satisfies that OCD of cable management and just seeing how people have wired certain, like even I think in the back where the TriCaster is, like seeing the cables that are all properly in their spots and like not just a mm. big bundle, like kind of makes me happy when I see that. Right? Yeah. It should, but it does. Yeah, no, it makes me feel better. It makes yeah. me at, at peace. Okay, now there's one last thing that uh, I actually think is pretty big. Uh, mm -hmm. You have the ability to do it because you have borrowed a switch that... Um, <laughs> it has power over Ethernet, power too. Power over Ethernet. It's this, a really nice switch. It's a nice switch. I don't know nice where switch. it came from. <laughs> this is actually huge, folks. PoE is one of my favorite things about having a wired network because ah, it yeah. means it's one less thing that I have to have. I can push power and data over the same line. Mm -hmm. um, and for, for our house, for example, all of our security cameras are PoE enabled, which means we don't need a separate line 
for the power. Right. Is there any compromise to that? Like, is yeah. there less of data transfer? It's nope. just, oh, that's cool. It's, it's actually very well done. Uh, we are actually, I've got a video for this. We're going to go back into the archives. Um, I, uh, on, on my other show, This Week in Enterprise Tech, you we talked about You have another show? I have many shows. What? Okay. I thought this was the only show you did. I, I've been, I uh, that felt special. I've been hosting on you. I'm sorry. You're such a horster. <laughs> horster. Hoster. No, in, in, when we come back, we're going to take a look at some of the tools that we're actually going to be using for this. But, uh, before we go over to the video, let's go yeah. ahead and take a break for these messages. We'll be right back to the know-how action, but first let's take a moment to thank a sponsor, of this episode of Know How. Now, imagine this. You protect your car. You protect your laptop. You protect your personal belongings. But do you protect your house? I mean, do you really protect your house with as much stuff as you've got in there? All your gadgets, all your gizmos, all your treasure. Is your house as able to be protected as that $800 smartphone in your back pocket? Well, folks, with, with Ring... It can be. Now, Ring is a new way to think about, about home security. It's not just a way to keep people out. It's a way for you to have an interaction with the people who might be coming to your door, to your property. Ring's mission is to make neighborhoods safer, and that's what they do. Over a million people are using their amazing Ring video doorbell to help protect their homes. Ring knows that home security begins at the front door, but it doesn't end there. That's why they've extended that same level of protection, that same level of interactivity that they first had with their Ring video doorbell to the, the entire home, the rest of your property. Things like the Ring floodlight cam. Now, just like Ring's video doorbell, the floodlight cam is a motion-activated camera and floodlight that connects to your phone. It's got HD video and two-way audio, which means you can see what's going on and you can hear and speak to someone who maybe shouldn't be behind your home. You can see and speak to visitors, even set off an alarm right from your home. If you don't like what you see, go ahead and press one button and have the authorities show up. And with Ring's floodlight cam, when things go bump in the night, you'll immediately know what it is. Whether you're home or away, the Ring floodlight cam lets you see exactly what's happening at your home. Ring floodlight cams offer the ultimate in home security with high visibility floodlights and a powerful HD camera that puts security in your hands. It was named Wall Street Journal's best of CES 2017. Now, you can monitor every corner of your property with a Ring of Security kit. All of their kits include the Ring Video Doorbell and your choice of either one, two, or three floodlight cams. You can connect your Ring Video Doorbell with your favorite smart locks and hubs for added convenience, monitoring, and security. With Ring, you're always home. And right now, you can save up to $150 off a Ring of Security kit when you go to ring.com slash knowhow. That's ring.com slash knowhow. And we thank Ring for their support. Of know how. And we are back. Okay, Brian, so POE is something that I very much believe in. I think it's a very useful tool. It's not just for enterprise anymore, it's, right. it's for consumer use because more and more of our consumer products are using POE. I'm trying to think of what consumer products. So you had mentioned security cameras. Cameras, yep. What else is there, though? All of my Internet of Things devices are POE. What Internet of Things devices so, do you like, have? So, like all of the Arduinos that are network connected. Those are Those also are POE? POE shields, right? Uh, Which is what you want because you want the same cable right. providing power and data. You don't want to have to multiple lines to your IoT device. Chances are, wherever you are running the line to your your Internet of uh, Things device, you're not going to have an a power outlet with a USB cable that you want to plug in there too. Precisely. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, we're going to jump over to Interop, which was a, a group that I used to work with that set up enterprise class networks, carrier class networks, to create one of the largest temporary networks in the world. I, uh, I took a look at what they were doing over there, and I spoke with one of their engineers about the promise of PoE. I'm Father Robert Balloser, the digital Jesuit host of TWIET, This Week in Enterprise Tech on the TWIT Network. It's time for another edition of Stuff My IT Guy Says. I'm here at the Interop Warehouse in Brisbane, California, and this time I've brought a guest. I'm sitting next to Mr. Peter Chen, a technical marketing engineer from Netgear. Thank you very much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Now, you're going to help us go through all this stuff, because all this gear in front of me is POE enabled. So tell me, Peter, what is POE? POE stands for Power Over Ethernet, which literally is what it says it is. Uh, it provides power 
to the devices that need it through your standard Ethernet cable. Okay, now I would imagine that would add cost and complexity. I have to replace switches or add power injectors. Why would I want to go through all that trouble when, well, honestly, things kind of work well as they do now? Take this IP camera, for example. In the past, if you had to get it to work, you would need two cables. One, Ethernet cable for your data, and you'd also need a power cable plus power adapter for the power. Now, this is all fine and dandy until you need to hook this up to the ceiling where there's no power socket to be found. So it's really about ease of deployment. Uh, if, I, if I have a tough installation, it allows me to run a single cable rather than running multiple cables. Exactly. Now, that, that, that works for uh, IP cameras, but it also works for something like this, which is an access point, which uh, means that instead of running a cable for console, a cable for data, and a cable for power, I can run one cable and uh, reduce my expenditure for deployment. Oh, yeah. It also means that I can use devices like this. IP phones are almost all PoE now, so I can run this phone off of one cable, which provides both its connectivity and its power. All right, now. Tell me how it works. I understand that PoE sends out 48 volts, but obviously it doesn't do it all the time because then I'd have live wires all over my network and uh, that could be problematic. Yeah, that could potentially burn down the office, so That'd we don't want that. Yeah, okay, no. And that's where uh, the 802.3 AF PoE and 802.3 AT PoE Plus standards come in. Mm, okay. It sort of regulates who gets how much power. Right. Now, with those standards, there's a, there's a handshake. So essentially, let's say uh, this, this camera. Mm -hmm. I plug this camera into this network, and uh, what's going to happen is the switch will recognize it has a new uh, device plugged in. It's going to send a short burst of power over to the camera and say, hey, do you support PoE? The camera will then say, yes, I support PoE. And the switch will say, OK, what kind of PoE do you want? And the camera will say, oh, I need AF, or I need AT and then the switch sends the appropriate amount. Exactly. Okay, now, tell me, what are the differences between classes of PoE? We've got AF, AT, I believe there's a couple of other intermediary steps, right? Yeah, so uh, the original AF standard uh, supplied uh, roughly up to 15 watts of power uh, per port. Uh, so, uh, as you can imagine, 15 watts is not a lot, and uh, you know, devices that are a little more power hungry could not be powered with that. So that's where the, the whole 802.3 AT standard came, comes in. It basically doubles the amount of power that can be supplied by a single PoE port. Right, so for example, this camera, this camera, that camera, this phone could be powered off of 15 watts, but this array definitely couldn't. Definitely not. Okay. Now, where do we see this going? Because obviously, we're not going to keep increasing the amount of voltage that we send over PoE, but we are seeing PoE included in pretty much every piece of enterprise gear. When do we start to see this, well, trickle down into the consumer side? I mean, we've already got it in a few cameras, but when does everything start to be powered over the same cable that it gets its data from? Well, actually, uh, in the past couple of years, you if you watch TV at all, you'll see a lot of, uh, you know, home surveillance uh, packages being offered by maybe your local cable provider. Um, with that, I imagine that there's going to be a ton of uh, surveillance cameras being installed to, you know, more and more homes all, all over the world. And uh, naturally, uh, PoE would be the obvious choice for flexible deployment. Okay. So there you have it. That's what PoE is. That's what it does. That's how it works. Now, you need to pick up some of these devices just to try it out for yourself. Personally, I always carry around this Netgear uh, ProSafe PoE switch so that I have the ability to power my phone and my cameras when I'm on the go. It might be the thing for your network. I'm Father Robert Ballas here. This is Stuff My IT Guy Says, and you've just been learning. I want to thank Curtis Bryant. <laughs> He's the one who actually made the music for this. Remember, this is this is a segment from like four years ago. Um, and Curtis, <laughs> when I when I first joined the Twit TV network, uh, mm -hmm. we were actually on the same episode of TNT together. Oh, that's funny. Uh, it was a it was the viewer call in the end of the year viewer call in show. Oh, 
okay. And so it was Curtis and I, and then I started working with Twit. He's like, hey, you want me to make you some music? I'm like, okay. <laughs> it wasn't so much the music as the little text graphics <laughs> floating around I've the screen. I've gotten better but... at my job since four years ago. <laughs> I'll just yeah. I'll say that. No, I, I actually, that. I liked it a lot more <laughs> because of that. I don't, I don't want it to be anything other than that ever. You know, Brian, the other thing about that video is it made me remember, I used to have this really nice small Netgear POE that switch. That looks really familiar. Yeah, I can't find it anymore. It's gone. That's strange. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of looks like something I have in my living room, but it couldn't possibly be the same one. No, no, not mm -hmm. at all. Never. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I actually do have a POE device here that I want to show you. This is actually one of my favorite all-time POE devices. Mm -hmm. This is a gigabit switch from 3Com. This is actually a four-port switch uh, that's managed. So this does VLANs. This does policy. I can, I can do everything. But my favorite, favorite part is... <gasps> It's PoE. So nice. what I've got here is what's called a PoE injector, um, and <laughs> it looks this like is a power brick. It, it is a power brick. So I, I, you have network in, and then you have one cable going out into the uplink. And this, actually, as you, uh, here, let's go to my my close up here. Uh, Get real there close. you go. It's hey, all it's all, it's all powered on, and, and just it's just one cable. one cable. So this 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 is a really good example. Uh, these were originally designed back in the days where offices had maybe one jack mm -hmm. and now they had a switch at every jack right well this actually attaches to the the uh the port the gang port and allows you to install this into the wall oh, cool. so every wall socket becomes a four ports managed switch that's smart yeah. I like and that. and uh, i use these at my home network because since they they do t speak vlan mm -hmm. this allows me every time someone plugs into the network they only see the gateway. They see nothing else because right. every new device gets a new VLAN off the major, uh, the main switch. You're such a security snob. I just, I like what I like. <laughs> no, I don't blame you. I That's do, a smart Brian. way of doing it. There's bad people out there yeah. always trying it's to true. mess with my network. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at me when you say that? Oh, I don't know. Just because mm. one of my switches is missing. One of your mm. switches is missing? Yeah. You don't seem bitter about no, that at all. No, it's, You I'm want your switch back? Share my switches. <laughs> Never share switch. <laughs> Friends don't share switches. Okay, so that's a POE device. Uh, now, what we need to do, Brian, mm -hmm. is we need to actually start looking at uh, the things that we want to have in our premise networking kit. Because people have asked us a lot, should, should I buy this? Should I buy... Uh, l let me say off the bat, um, if you're just starting out, there's no need to buy yourself the really expensive tools. Like, right. for example, I gave you a crimper there if you uh, want to show it off to people. Uh, that's a... $160 crimper. Uh, so you, I should stop playing with it. <laughs> you should. Well, I mean, look, that's a $160 crimper. This Let's is an $8 crimper. Um, but they do the same thing. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. The, and, and in fact, this is probably easier to use for some beginners than that. Right. But you probably have this because you were doing a lot of a lot. network stuff. Yeah. 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 But uh, let, let's, let's, let's run it down. The first thing you're going to need are some sort of cable crimpers. We've got an, a, a link here. These are pretty good. This is not the cheapest you can get. But it's also in the way not the most expensive. It lasts a long time. I played it with a lot of Trendnet gear. You need something that will do RJ45. Um, and like the reason why that one's so expensive is because that has interchangeable dies. So I could change the crimp to based on what kind of plugs I'm using. I see. These are all fixed. So they, they will crimp and they will kind of work with different effectiveness. Based on I see. That's so super fancy. Right. right. Got it. Uh, the other thing you're going to need are a set of diagonal cutters. Don't just use scissors. You actually want to get something that was designed to cut wire. Um, and something else. Hide these. Wow. Uh, don't like, don't let anyone else use them because w w what the, you end up doing is they do things like they're cutting rebar or they're cutting through things like coat hangers. Hey, or some pruning in the garden. Yeah, don't. Don't use them <laughs> don't, for that. Don't. This is for one thing. This is for your networking. Keep this in your networking bag. Uh, and you don't want them to dull it. You don't want them to, to kill this because what's right. going to end up happening is instead of cutting through wires, yeah. you end up tearing them. Pinch you don't want to yeah. tear. You want to cut. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, we've got a link for these here. Uh, I don't skimp on my diagonal cutters i this is actually like a 40 dollars set uh you can get cheaper ones but yeah get but you buy set. one pair of diagonal cutters and you have them for life as long as you don't let anyone else use them can i see those real quick no <laughs> all right i was testing you <laughs> uh the, the other thing you're going to need is some sort of cable tester and again many different levels this is a super inexpensive one this is a seven dollar cable tester essentially all you need is something that will pass signal pass voltage through all eight of the wires inside of your category five or six cable yeah. and tell you if it's going across. Uh, I've got a couple of not 
as inexpensive. This is a fluke. Mm -hmm. uh, what I like about this is this is also a, uh, a toner. So what you can do is you can plug this side into the cable, mm -hmm. and let's say you have a bundle of cables, you can actually turn on the, uh, the, the probe and just pass along the outside of the insulation, and you'll start hearing the tone when you're getting the right one. And in fact, let me, let me demonstrate what that looks like, or sounds like, actually. Right. Oh, well, I but this is some pretty serious network premising stuff. Like, yeah, I mean, uh, most people aren't going to do this. If you were... See? So as you get closer to the cable, it gets louder and louder, and it tells you, okay, that's the cable I'm looking for. So if it was in a pile of wires, you could right. then discern. Right. You kind of hear the noise on all of them, but as you like when you touch the casing of the one that it is, it'll get really loud. Go, that's the one. So if you're doing like a business and there's a thousand computer cables that you're looking at. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that part of the functionality is nice, but probably not going to be needed for your home. But what it does do and what you would use this for is it does a cable map. So if I turn this to cable mapping, like so... I can take my probe and I can turn this to the cable map as well, like this. Fluke network. And what you're hearing is it's actually these lights. So it's yeah. going through every cable. And as long as I hear that boop, 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 boop Then that boop. cable is connected in That's working. good, right. Mm. If I hear that bloop, that means there's something that's missing. Huh. It's, I think I've heard that noise before on yeah, a cable that yeah. I may have made. Like all the cables you've ever made. <laughs> all the cables I've ever made? Maybe not all uh, of no, them. No, not all of them. Just some of them. Just I ruined cables for demonstration purposes, which I will not get wrong on this episode no, if that's no. what we're doing. But you know what? In fact, I'm going to leave that with you. We're going to put that right Fluke. in the middle. This is something a bit higher, and um, this used to be incredibly expensive back in the day. This was like a $1,500 tool. So back oh. in the day for you, we're like... Not like the 60s. <laughs> All right, continue. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I like about this net tool, if you go to the close-up, is this doesn't provide just testing. This will also do things like it'll ping uh, to IP servers outside. Uh, it will also do the um, uh, time division. So if I have a break in the cable, this won't just tell me that it, the signal is not going through. It will mm -hmm. actually tell me uh, at what distance is the break. Oh, because really what will happen cool. is it will, it will send the signal down, down the cable. When it hits the brake, the signal bounces. And it can judge from that how right. far it, it is. It'll take, cool. it'll take the time that it took for the signal to bounce back, mm -hmm. divide it by two, multiply that by the speed of the pulse through the wire, and you, you get the exact distance at which the brake exists. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, but you can get these on eBay now, though. Yeah? Uh, for I think I bought this one for like 200 bucks. All right. Uh, what were they originally? Uh, 1500 Ha! <laughs> Yeah, they're <gasps> expensive. Fluke tools, <gasps> fluke tools tend to be a bit expensive. They don't fluke around. Yep. <laughs> wow. All right. Good. Good stuff. Uh, <laughs> the other thing you're going to need is a punch down tool. Super simple. Uh, it's it's also known as an impact tool. Uh, it allows you to to punch. So I can I can push this into a Keystone Jack system, uh -huh. and I keep doing this until when I hear that click. It means what it just did was it it used up the stored force to punch it. Right. And it gives you a nice clean cut or a nice clean impact into a keystone system. I see. And that is where it cuts kind of the sleeve around the, the wire Correct. and then leaves it, doesn't yep. cut the wire, but it leaves it bare. Yeah, and one thing, the middle, if you go the to the, the close up here, Alex. Um, no, my close up. There you go. So uh, if you look at these systems, there's a blade. And you can, if I trigger this, I can take the wait. It's not easy. It's, there we go. So easy. You can take the blade out. Um, one side is flat, so this is this is no cut. Mm. This side, there's a cut. This side is a cut, which means when you're punching your keystone jack, you want to make sure that the cut side uh -huh. is away from the cable because otherwise you're cutting the cable as uh. you punch it in. Oops. Yeah. yeah. This is just to keep it clean. So what we'll do is you, as you punch it down, it will cut off the excess. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's cool. go. Hold on. Boom! What? And that costs. Uh, these are cheap. I'm uh, about twenty bucks, seventeen dollars. I, I think Alex already showed the, the link. There. Oh, okay. Okay. Now that's all the major tools. So you need cutters, you need crimpers, you need a punch down tool, you need something to test it. But there are a couple other bits and bobbins that I like to have in my kit. Yeah. Uh, the first is this. These are Category Five barrel connectors, and I've got actually here. Let me take you want the white one, one of those here. No, you got the black one too. Oh, cool. Uh, two different styles. These just allow you to, to barrel connect two RJ45 connectors. Incredibly useful to have these in your kit because it means that you can extend cables uh, or I can, uh, I can you know, change the, the sex of the cable because I need to, say, hook it up to a tester. Right. Uh, I always have at least 
five or six of these things in my kit at any given time. Now, if you did use these to extend a cable, is there any compromise of like the nope. data going over? Oh. Absolutely not. Uh, as long as you don't go beyond the specifications of Ethernet, which is 330 feet. Right. So total is 330 feet. Maybe this might knock a foot off because there's a little bit of electrical resistance, but not not nearly enough to, to make a major difference in the hmm. signal, the connection that you're getting. And for power over Ethernet, is that the same, same length? Thing. Okay. Yeah. So. This is, this is, and actually people ask this all the time. They ask me if PoE will affect the signal. Yeah. Uh, what we found, and I still can't explain this, is the runs that we've done for interop where we ran PoE, mm -hmm. the signal maintained its coherence past 330 feet. There's something about having power running in the same lines that actually decreases the amount of crosstalk that's interfering mm -hmm. with your signal. It's interesting. Of course, that just might be the way we set up our network. I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right. It's not, it's not gospel. That's not Bible, but right, it but worked for you, us. Okay. Uh, the other thing you're going to want, and this is sort of a sp specific uh, specialty piece, is this a Category 6 crossover cable. If you go to the link for that, all this does is it reverses the pairs. Because that, and we're going to show you this. When we're, when we're punching down, there's the send pair and there's the listen pair. Mm -hmm. This reverses it. Normally, it's straight across. So the send pair on the head is the send pair on the end. Mm -hmm. The receive pair on the, on the head is the receive pair on the end. This flips them so that you can actually cross over. Now, a crossover cable. Yeah, you used to need these all the time before switches and computers started doing what's called auto MDX. They, they will cross over their own pairs. Interesting. Okay. But every once in a while, you'll, you'll get a really old piece of gear that's not doing it, and a crossover cable will save you from having to cut the cable and then re-splice it. All right. So you know how I told you me and my dad set up the network at our, my family's home? Yeah. I think I'm pretty sure when we set up the cable that we were hooking up to the original Xbox, we had to make sure it was a crossover, crossover. cable so that I could then use Xbox Live on it. Yeah, yeah. And like the really, really old switches, in fact, you know, back to the hubs, yeah. they used to have a button. So like port one, you could switch between regular and crossover. You had to push the button. And then they got smart. They're like, let's it just enable matter. that on all ports. And it will just say, oh, yeah. I'm receiving on the send side. Well, I'll just swap the pins. Yeah, you can do so that in software. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. All right. So uh, the other thing you're going to want to do is get yourself, and you probably have this already, a USB 3.0 gig 110 adapter. These run anywhere from $10 up to $50 based on how, uh, how good you want this. But uh, especially if you're going to be diagnosing with a laptop, mm -hmm. just make sure that's in your kit. That's always something to have. I need to get kit. one of those. Yeah. Uh, the other thing you're going to want is, uh, and uh, I, I kind of live by this, it's a PoE detector. Uh, these are a little pricey. In fact, the one that I, I have marked here is 30 bucks, but it can save you if you are dealing with a network with PoE. In fact, let me go ahead and, and pull this. What this will do is it will not only tell you that you have PoE present, mm -hmm. it will tell you what kind of PoE you have. So if you uh, look at this, actually, let me unplug this. So and I, remember what, I, what we said in the video, when you connect a PoE device, uh, the switch or the power center is gonna send a, a very low voltage right. to the device to power it up enough for it to ask, do you support PoE? If it hears back on what type of PoE it will send, then you start to receive power. Mm -hmm. So this will actually tell me, is this 1236, 45 or 78? Those are the different types of uh, PoE I can receive. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know this, this is actually just something that's useful to have because you can plug it into a, a, a patch panel, you can plug it into a, a patch cable and figure out if that, that is support, supposed to support PoE. And right. now you know if it's the device or the cable or the patch. I can see that pre being pretty handy, but you said it's expensive? It's 30 bucks. Uh, okay. So again, kind of specialized. I have it in my bag. You don't necessarily have to. I understand. Um, this, I would suggest you have it in your bag because this is kind of life-saving a non-contact voltage detector. This happens all the time in installations that I haven't done where someone does something stupid mm -hmm. and like now they're sending voltage over a category five cable or category six cable. How do you accidentally do that? Uh, because someone says, hey, you know what? I've got free pairs, so I'm going to send AC power down to one of the peds. It's, yeah, you know, it sounds stupid and it is stupid and I would never do that. But people have done that. And cutting into a cable that has live power going, <gasps> yeah, don't do that. So what this will do is this will actually tell me, so if, if you look at it, it's, uh, there you go. So it's got a little light. Mm -hmm. But this will tell me if there's voltage coming over the line that I should have to worry about. Let's see if I can get it to trigger. And it's non, uh, if you go back to the close-up. So if I do this, see how it? I get a little red? 
that. Yeah. So that's telling me, no, there's AC voltage there. Don't, what? Don't cut into that. And I don't have to cut through the sheathing. It just tells me. How yeah. does it know? Because it's smart, Brian. All right. I believe you. It's just magic. It's smart. And again, these are about 30 bucks. Uh, but 30 bucks is not a lot uh, compared to a hospital uh, bill for getting electrocuted. Oof. Yeah. Or a funeral or bill. funeral bill. Yeah. So th those are the bits and the bobbins that I keep in my kit. Okay. Um, again, most of the time I keep it there just because I've had them for years and years and years. Right. This is a broken pair of primpers, but it still kind of works. <laughs> I needed to give Brian <laughs> a handicap. If it ain't completely broke, don't throw it away. Precisely. Uh, and then the last bit are consumables. And my consumables are always Keystone Jacks and the uh, the individual heads for the RJ45. Now, there are different types mm -hmm. of um, of heads. There are the ones that require sleeves, which I absolutely hate. Some people mm -hmm. swear by them, but I prefer the one where you just directly insert the wires and then crimp it down. Do you find that that's easier to put together? Is that yeah. why you prefer them? Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, it's just the way that I've worked. Now, if you are looking for an all-in-one kit, you, you don't want to buy all these parts individually. Alex, I think we have a link there for this. This is super, super cheap. This is 16 bucks. That will give you the crimper, a tester, a stripper, and the heads. So if you just want to start playing around with your, your wiring skills, this is a really good deal. All right. I like that. I'll probably pick something up like that. All right. Uh, so, Brian, we've got the kit out of the way. You, uh, Am I ready to ready do to some cabling? Cable? Let's do it. Yeah. yeah we're going to do this in and just a bit. Test it, right? But uh, first, let's take a break for these messages. Previously on Twit. There's good touch, mm -hmm. there's bad touch, and there's force touch. And there's 3D touch. We're going to talk about the latter two. Mm-hmm on the show today. Mm -hmm. other, many other shows you can watch to talk about the first two. <laughs> Windows Weekly. Surface laptop is the most important Surface device ever? You said I that, think, Paul. I, d I know. It sounds ridiculous. Give it, give it a second. Hold on. Let it seep in a little, a little bit. It will, it will get it's better. It's seeping, all right. Not only does this thing have a future, but it's the core of the platform. It's the proof point for what Microsoft has been trying to show us. Mac Break Weekly. Merriam-Webster, the dictionary company, has added a new word... <laughs> the word is sheeple. The example, Apple debuted a battery case for the juice-sucking iPhone, an ungainly, lumpy case. The sheeple <laughs> will happily shell out $99 for. That seems a little bit editorial for a reference book, <laughs> don't you think? The new screensavers. Facebook Spaces, is that it? Yep, open up the app. Oh, look at that. Oh. Upside down penguins. Is that what's upside happening? down for you? Uh, they are right side up for me, and they are gigantic. So, yeah. <laughs> if you like, I'm going to get out, Watch out, he's going to eat your head. <laughs> Twit. It keeps going and going and going. It's like a booger. I can't get rid of it. <laughs> oh, what happened? Did we crash it? Whoa, you just disappeared in like a burst of emojis. <laughs> I wish you would have seen what I saw. Whoa, you did the same thing. How did, how did you do how did that? You do, I don't know how you just That's did that. That's cool. And we're back. Okay, Brian. So um, I've got this from last time. This is a little something, something, something that I made. Yeah. Um, this absolutely has a uh, an RJ45 connector on one side. It's got a keystone jack on the other. Right. Um, that is pre-made. I know one of those heads, that head is right. Mm -hmm. The other one is not. Is has nothing on it. It's you want to do wired. keystone or do you want to do crimping? Uh, I want to do crimping. All right. So here's a head for you. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, even though this cable works, I'm going to cut this off because you know what, Brian? That's the kind of love I got for you, bro. Ah! Okay, so this cable is no longer good. What we need to do first is we need to strip away enough insulation uh -huh. so that we can get at the wires. But here's the trick. You don't want to nick any of the wires. If you nick the wires on the inside, yeah. you got to start over because you've just created a short. Okay. okay that so makes sense. Do you want the nice one? No, no. I'm going to use the crappy one. You can use the <laughs> nice one. Okay, if you go to my close-up. Oh, there we go. Close up. All right. So I've got a blade here. You've got a blade on your cutter as well. You don't want to go all the way down. I'm going to go very lightly. I'm just going to kind of score the edges and I'm going to turn the cable just enough so I can cut through that outer insulation like so. Once I've got it, you can just pull it. Check really quickly. Go around, around all the cables to make sure that you haven't stripped away any of that insulation. Now, for premise wiring, there's normally this. This is a little bit of a, a fiberglass wire. It, uh, it allows it to have a little extra strength so that it's not 
when you pull on the on the cable, you're not it, pulling on the wires, you're pulling on the fiberglass. That makes sense. Yeah. So once I've got my four pairs, because category five and six all have four pairs, mm -hmm. there's an order to this. We're going to be using uh, the standard uh, for, for this. It's called the T568 wiring standard. We're using the B spec. Okay. In the B spec, what I want to do is I want to unwind these a little bit, and then I'm going to go white orange, orange, white green, blue, white blue, green, white brown, brown. So it's always white color, white color, white color, white color. Okay. okay. Why did they have to use orange and brown? They're kind of close. <laughs> uh, they did it to confuse you. <laughs> yeah, right? So in, in this particular one right now, I've got, uh, this is brown, blue, orange, and green. So I'm going to preset it. So I want orange first. Then I'm going to want green, then I'm going to want blue, then I'm going to want brown. So let's just get them into the order that I want them in when the cable's finished. Okay. Now, the temptation is going to be to unwind these cables entirely. Uh, you don't want to unwind them too much because what's going to happen is if you have more than of about a quarter of, in, of an inch of, uh, of, of unwind, mm -hmm. non-twisted, you're actually degrading the signal. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the you know, basically unwind it down to this insulation, not more. So I'm going to do this. So just one finger. Mm -hmm. I'm going to unwind. So that's my uh, orange. This is my green. Orange. So I'm going to go white, orange, orange, white, green, then blue. There's a little surprise there. Then white, blue, then green, then white, brown, then brown. So this is what it should look like, man. That's. You want to fan it out. So here I'm going uh, <laughs> white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. All right. White, orange, orange, white, green, green, white. Was it blue next? White, blue, white, bl uh, blue, and then white, brown, brown. Yeah. Just But remember, it's white, orange, orange, white, green, then blue, <laughs> then white, blue, then green. Okay. That's that's the standard, and that was the one of the original ways to keep it out from a crosstalk. Now, ah. once I have these lined up the way I want them, there's here's a trick. So you kind of put them next to each other, get them straight. They're not going to quite fit. So what you do is you grab it like this, and you kind of shimmy it. And when you shimmy, mm -hmm. what's going to happen is the cables will just kind of naturally line up. Oh uh, yeah, and that's what you want. Okay. Right. Now before I put them into the head, you double check to make sure that the wires are in the right order. Again, so I've got. White, orange, orange, mm -hmm. white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. So I'm in the right order. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to even out the top of these lines. I want them to be nice and straight for when I put them into the jack. So I'm going to take my clippers and about a quarter of an inch up from the base there, I'm going to go ahead and snip straight across like so. There we go. So okay. that's that's what I want it to look like. Okay. Does yours look like that, dear Brian? It's getting there. I'm doing. I'm in the shimmying process now. Shimmy is my favorite part. Shimmy, 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 shimmy. Yeah, shimmy, 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 shimmy. Okay. All right. So now here's the fun part. You're gonna take this. You're gonna keep a little bit of tension so that the wires don't go out of out of order, mm -hmm. and they go all the way into the head. There's individual channels in here that will hold the wires. Now, uh, if if I didn't have a microphone in my face, <laughs> what I could do is I could actually take a look again and make sure those, that those are in the right order, uh, but I, I don't, I can't get the microphone out of my face, so I'm just going to crimp this and hope for the best. The best. Now, mine's a really old natty crimper, so I have to do it multiple times. You should be able to do it just once. Okay. Uh, so copper or, I don't know, fin side up or fin side down? Fin side up. You, you always want to be looking at the, the, uh, the pins because that's how you're going to insert it. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to test mine, <laughs> and we're going to see what it sounds like, or we're going to hear... What it sounds like, Brian. I need to get this closer to my face. All right, so let's turn that on. And let's hear the sounds of shame. Shame. Wait, hold on. Oh, how about that? Oh, perfect on his first try. More time. No, no big deal. It's my beat. It's my jam, Brian. It's called Perfect Cable Test. What? 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 Mr. Bragger. <laughs> okay. I've been doing this my whole All right, life. So while you work on that, I'm going to show you what the other cable tester looks like. And this is this is actually kind of cool. So what I can do is I can actually put this. This is a little cable probe 
for my fluke tester, for my, uh, my net tool, and it's going to bounce signal off of it. There we go. So if I auto test, it will show me distance, although this is a little too short for it to show distance properly. And it will actually show, make sure that all the pairs are going to where they're supposed to be. And three, two, one. There we go. So it knows that all it knows is it's less than 50 feet because it's too short for the, the time division to work properly. But that's what you want to see. You want to see all the lines going straight across. That one's broken because there is no insulation pair. Um, but uh, all eight are going straight across. This <laughs> this is a good cable. So what happens if you put the it into the <laughs> crimper and then the cables come out before you crimp? Okay. How do you... <laughs> How okay, do you get the, it out? Use the diagonal cutter and like just lightly nick or the plastic and just pull it, pull it back. Ugh. There we go. Uh, you know what? Let's give all you right. a fresh head. No, 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 no. no you, that, that head, did you crimp it at all? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. That's, so it should that's be okay, right? Okay, I, yeah. Because once you, when you crimp it, what you're doing is you're actually forcing those little pins, those tines into the, into wire. the wire. And once they're down, they, they don't come back up. Man. All right. Okay. You know what? I don't want to put too much pressure on Brian. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. Let's, I think I should do another one. You gonna do another one in the time that I've done one? <laughs> it's, it's doing. You know what? Uh, let's up the difficulty. We're gonna use this the store made cable. If you give me the crimper. Wait, this crimper? No, the, the sorry, the oh, diagonal the cutter. We call dykes. Uh, sorry, diagonal cutters. Okay, so toss that away. So this is actually something that a lot of you will have well, where you have a cable that's got a bad head, like you've broken the tab off the head. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? It's kind of easy for you to replace that. All right, so okay. strip. There we go. And look at that. So this one even has this uh, this little plastic sheathing inside of it. Hmm. That's the support, the centerpiece. Oh, yeah, okay. And, uh, yeah, I don't want that. All right, so I'm going to crimp this now, Padre. Go, go, okay. Brian. On this nice crimper, you so go. I have no excuses. This one's easier to see. Look, it's uh, so I got orange, then green, then blue, then brown. I think I crimped. <laughs> Okay. Um, so that's my orange. Um, it's my green. Why isn't it releasing? It's not really. It's oh, it's a ratchet crimp. So you have to hit the release. You have to go all the way in before it comes back out. It's like it's like a ratchet on uh, the seat belt in your car. I see. Okay, got it out. I. Yeah, that looks normal. All right. I think. <laughs> no, you no, you're doing a you, Brian. You're, you're doing a great Where's job. Where's my man. fluke? I need you're to doing, try this. You're doing a great job. This is the one to try, right? Uh, you no? want to try with this one first. One. Yeah. This is gonna be so bad. Hey, hey, believe in yourself. I believe in you, Brian. And then... it's gonna be perfect the first time you turn it on. Okay. Well, you need you need to hook up the other side. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Too. It's making noises at me. Go. Uh, no, you want to mm -hmm. turn it to cable map. All the way over to cable map. No, cable map. It's oh, cable map. Cable map. Other directions. <laughs> <laughs> is that bad? That's not good. <laughs> the bong is a sad sound, is it not? <laughs> Three is bad. One is bad. Eight is bad. Okay, so there's a little bit of badness in there. Just a little bit. Uh, so here, what you want to do is go ahead and uh, plug one side of your cable into this and the other side into that and uh, run an auto test, and it will show you what is connected to what. All right. Because I'm thinking you probably just have some cross cables in there. You can fix this, Brian. This is all you, man. It can't be fixed. I think what might have happened is that the wires didn't go all the way down to the metal part, but yeah, not 100% sure. That's quite possible. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do the second connector, like so. Oop. Auto test. These are, these are stranded Working. instead of solid. This makes them a little more Working. finicky. Working. There we go. What does it say? It says it's less than 50 feet. Okay, and now a move over. and so, so we'll use the arrow key, move over to the right, to the right, to the right. The other right. There we go. Right. Uh, we, I can't see because you got it. Oh, it's There's right. Too much glare. Oh, okay. sorry. And hit OK or select. <laughs> Is that bad? <laughs> Why are you laughing? 
<laughs> you laughing uh, at okay. this? Okay, ideally it should be straight across. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I got uh, some of the wires mixed up, huh? That's like a super special crossover cable, man. Again, I, I, I did it again. I need to practice this. Okay, it's not easy on camera. No, That's the problem. It's not. It's not. It's hard. I know. I just hey hey right. hey. I feel. I All feel. Right. So one of the sides was right though, because well, I, look here. Here's my shame. I probably just messed up this cable here. If you can hand me that. There you let's, go. Uh, let's hear the tones of shame, Brian. I'm gonna redo mine. Bomb oh, man. see, I have one, one bad one. Tone of shame. That's my eight. It's not crimped all the way. Hold on. I can fix this, Brian. Did I not crimp mine properly? Like, one of the heads looks different than the other. Yeah, the head should look the same. Uh, They're exactly backwards. Exactly backwards. They're exactly. <laughs> you know what, Brian? Um, <laughs> I'm going to do you a favor here. Uh, all right. Oh, no. There we go. <laughs> Start. Oh, no. <laughs> Start my, my connectors are gone. My career in IT is oh, ruined. No. I see what happened. What happened was the, the last two pairs flipped on me. So, on yours? On mine. On mine, they are just terrible. They're just not. They're just no, awful. They're no bueno. Okay, so go ahead and work on that. There's one last little bit that I want to show you, which is this. This is the keystone jack. Uh, this allows me to, if you go to the close-up, to put in wires. So on this side, I've got, um, uh, I'm using the B pattern. So orange, white orange, green, white green, blue, white blue, brown, white brown. So that's the order I have to put these in. In fact, that's what I'm going to do with this cable since I, I messed up the first um, the first termination. But see, Brian, I, I made a mistake too. <laughs> we so all make mistakes. We all make mistakes, Brian. I feel so much better now. Right? Don't uh, you? And if I nicked one of the the shielding on one of the wires, I should just you should start, start again, out, yeah. yeah. So strip down further. It's gonna head off because you're not gonna remember that. Yeah, you're gonna start having a flaky cable, and you're not gonna know why. Right. And then you're gonna go, oh, it's because I nicked, nicked one of the cables. Got so it. I want orange and green on one side. I want brown and blue on the other side. So I'm gonna untangle these or untwist them, like so. We're learning. It's all it, part you of know, the process. It's, it's been. Two to three years since we've done these episodes on Know How. So, yeah, we haven't done this for a while. And I don't have great cause for termination anymore because I've my network's done. I, yeah. It works. I don't have to keep cutting cables. I do, though. So I need to get good at this because I have a giant just wound cable do underneath you, my desk. you want to take the tools home, Brian? I'll get my own kit. No, you can take my tools. It's fine. <laughs> well, you remember what happened with your switch? Uh, yeah. Right. But you know what? I'm I'm happy to share because you're my bro. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm trying to learn here. Okay, so blue. Okay, so orange. Like, well, I do this. So yeah, I'm gonna be putting these into the right slots. It's white, green, and then green, and then orange and orange. Yeah, take your time when you're doing this spot because this is frustration tends to set in and then you make bad terminations. Uh, and especially with the keystone jack, you always want to be worrying about uh, untwisting too much because it gets really, really easy for you to, to untwist everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, the untwist continues down into the cable. Uh, and next thing you know, you've got inches of untwisted wire and it just, it destroys it. it it'll make a connection, but now, you know, suddenly you're, you're, uh, your bandwidth is nothing. All right, so when I have this, there we go. That's mm -hmm. that's supposedly in the right way. So I'm going <laughs> to double check. Brown, uh, oh, white, brown, brown, white, blue, blue, uh, white, green, green, white, orange, orange. Now I'm going to use the impact tool with the cutting side to do this. There we go. <laughs> Come on, camera. White, there we go. Uh, remember, make sure the cutting is on the outside. Mm -hmm. And hold on, I have to hold this properly where it will not work. It's a satisfying. It's what you get <laughs> trying to destroy my network. Blue, white, blue. Get back over there, white, blue. Technically, you only have to do it once, but I'm like, you know, as long as I'm in there. <laughs> Might as well get it done. All right. 
white, orange, orange, white, green, blue. Oh, white, that blue, did not cut really well. Green. My cutter blade is kind of dull. Okay. But let's see if it worked. Uh, oh, can I have another head jack thing? Is oh, it in here? Yeah. Cool. I'm going to take <laughs> your beautiful. Seriously, I, I, I want to. Here, wait. Can you go close on this, Alex? Do we really need to? What? I, it's, it is exactly reversed. Like one is eight, two is seven. So I just had the head flipped around. Well, then you also have like broken connectors at two, four, <laughs> five, six. <laughs> it's impressive. Is it that is, what you're saying? I, what I'm saying is I didn't know that was actually possible. But okay, awesome. I found a way. Let's see. Let's see if I terminated this properly, which I probably did not. But we'll see. I think you gave me a cable with a bad oh, head jack. My seven is bad. I think you gave me a cable that was doomed to fail because you wanted the laughs. Did I? <laughs> no. I mean, I wouldn't no, put it past me, didn't. but I don't think I did. I don't think you did. I, I mean, I wouldn't do I gave you the good crimper. I know. I failed on my own. Oh, actually, that's why the cable came back out. Uh, there's also a little uh, thing that allows you to sort of force it down. Let's see if I can make this work again. Uh, because what happened was I moved it enough where the the wires jumped back out. The problem is this this cable is is not solid strand. It's it's um it's uh, it's it's stranded, not solid. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't stick as well. There we go. Okay, so this is a perfect cable. This goes straight across on all eight. So I'm going from a <laughs> a terminated head to a terminated Keystone Jack. Okay, Brian. So that's three cables. So over this here. is going to be a perfect cable, just so you know, because I am fairly certain that I just you you already did the other head, right? <sighs> Still on the first head. Hold on. It's okay, it's hey, hey. You know what? Wanted to get it right. It's, it's about the journey. It's, it's not about the destination. <laughs> it's going to be a really long journey. It's like watching <laughs> Lord of the Rings here. A lot of walking. <laughs> okay, we, we got to close this up. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. Uh, I do want to mention two things. First. Uh, is the fact that if you are in the Bay Area, guess what? On the 19th, Friday, May 19th, mm -hmm. Twit is going to be at Maker Faire in San Mateo. That's right. Leo Laporte is going to be out there. What we want you to do is come on come on by. Come say hi. Get some Twitch swag. Say hi to Leo. Get us a, an autograph. But more importantly, bring your Maker stuff. Anything that you've built, anything that you're proud of, bring it in. Because we want to film it. We want to put it on uh, on Know How. I'm going to have my cable there with me because I'm going to be proud of this cable. Actually, get the other head here's on. a challenge. If you're coming to Maker Fair, bring a cable that you've made. <laughs> we're we'll going to take test pictures it. of all of them, and then we're going to put it alongside a picture of Brian's test. <laughs> we'll test them out make sure your cables are good. <laughs> uh, finally, we do have a parting shot. I, I did I did want to show this. Hey, Brian, uh, you got you to read this down. This is from S uh, Stefan Vermilia. Stefan, okay. But uh, he's got a project that he wanted to show off. Uh, you want to go ahead and do the uh, honors? Yeah, sure. So Stefan asks, hey, Brian Burnett, you wanted to see a goggle completed. I think my version 2 goggles turned out better than your broken robot look. Oh, really? I made these goggles for my niece who went to the 2017 First Robotics Championship in St. Louis this past weekend. She received a lot of compliments for my mod. I modeled and printed two team logos, then glued them to both sides for some added splash. Thank you, Father Robert Balliser and Brian, for showing me what to do and not, and not to... <laughs> And not to do um, <clears throat> and what not to to complete a project like this. Keep them coming. If you go to the huh. close up, these these are beautiful. You did such a good job. I mean, this is what we want to see. You took the project and you expanded upon them. If you'll notice, he's got oh, even so more pretty. gears. He's like loaded this thing up with brass gears. And uh, look at that. The team logo on the side. That's hot. That's yes. Oh yes, yeah, yes, that's yes. So yes. Great. Now that is that is really great. I'm glad that uh, somebody did it right. But do you have a double stack? What? what? <laughs> you shouldn't. This is stupid. But but no. thank you very much for showing off your project. If you've done a build of the steampunk goggles or anything that we have here on Know How, please send us pictures, send us videos because we love to show off your work. We do, now, even if you're kind of braggy about it. Yeah. 
Go figure. <laughs> Which is fine. Now, if uh, you want to find out anything else that we did on this show, from the links to the products that we showed off to uh, all kind of step-by-step -step instructions, you can always get them at our show notes. And Brian, where did they find those? Oh, well, they can find them at twit.tv slash kh. And not only will you find the show notes, but you'll find the links for all the stuff that we talked about. And also, which pairs go with what? It's white, orange, <laughs> still orange. Really that. <laughs> <laughs> also, don't forget you can find us on the socials. Specifically, you can find us on Google+. Plus. Yes, Google+, Plus still does exist. And now that most of the spammers have gone away, it's a really, really good forum for discussion. Just go to Google+, Plus and look for know-how. There's a very short approval process, so we can keep out those aforementioned spammer accounts. But once you're in, you get access to over 11,000 know-it-alls. That's our kitas. Mm -hmm. People who are on every stage of their maker journey from noob all the way up to, to experienced. Now, you can come in, you can ask questions, you can answer questions, you can give us pictures of your projects and mm -hmm. maybe give us an idea for something for the future of know-how. Just go to Google Plus and look for know-how. That's right. And when you're posting on Google Plus, you don't have to give us the how not to do it and do it <laughs> like we do for you. But if you want to find out if this cable actually works later, the best place to find that out will be on Twitter. And you can follow me at Cranky underscore Hippo. And you can find me at Padre SJ. And you can find the third member of our team, the man who sits behind the desk. <laughs> Thank you for the screenshot. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's got to be our... Um, that's going to be the show that's gonna be image. The but uh, you can find him at uh, A-N-E-L-F-3. That's Anel3. That's Twitter at Anel3. Oh, and by the way, what 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 is his name? I Stefan. Mean, I, Stefan. You should find Stefan at A N E L F. <laughs> Excuse me, Padre. That's pronounced Alex. I'm sorry. Oh. That doesn't sound European I've been enough. Getting it wrong all these years. Stefan sounds pretty. Stefan Gumpel, or right? what was it? Uh, Dean Gumpel. That sounds like Dean. a Dean. Like if he was. Yeah, I could do Dean. All Dean right, Dean Gumpel. You can find Dean Gumpel at Twitter.com/slash. A-N-E-L-F-3. Until next time, I'm Father Robert Ballasare. And I'm Brian Burnett. And now that you know how, go go wire it. Go network it. I'm going to get this right. You will. You will. And seriously, you have to tweet that out. Anyway.